in Fate Corner, presented by Jennifer. Starcrossed, preface in Chapter 1. Palpatine's plan had been set into motion. He had Anakin Skywalker, the Chosen One, on his side in a way to turn the Senate against the Jedi. But while many Jedi lost their lives in those dark days following the founding of the Empire, a few managed to survive and go into hiding. Being hunted by Imperials, many took new names and refused to use the Force in the hope of remaining anonymous. Others, thought to have been killed during Order 66, went into hiding. Some Jedi faked their deaths to prevent the Empire from looking for them. Others changed their names. But two Jedi, thought to be dead, didn't fake their deaths. One was Kit Fisto. Somehow he survived the deal with Palpatine and made his way off of Coruscant. The other was Ayla Sakura. Though shot by her own troopers, she only received grazing shots, and the ones that did, did pierce her blue skin never hit any vital organs. No one knew they had survived, or that they had made their way to the Outer Rim. No one knew that the Force had plans for them, plans that involved them being together. And, because of that, the Force was drawing these two former Jedi together. Neither one knew the other survived. Neither one knew how the other felt about them, believing that what they were feeling through the Force was their own emotions getting the best of them. Now, with the Jedi all but gone, and all the rules that the Jedi Order imposed gone, they were free to explore their feelings and have what they never thought they could. Ayla had never known life outside the order, outside the Jedi Order. True, she had only been five when she was brought to the temple, but she could barely remember the five years she had spent on Ryloth with her family. She couldn't even remember her family. She knew that it was the same for all Jedi, except Anakin, who was nine, who had been nine when Qui Gon and Obi Wan had found him and brought him to the temple. But now she had no choice but to try and carve out a new life for herself in the newly established Galactic Empire. It had been a year since the dark day when the Jedi Order and the Republic had fallen and the Empire had taken control of the galaxy. Ayla stayed as far away from the core worlds as she could, taking a job in a cantina in the Outer Rim. It may not be as noble as being a Jedi, but it paid for her small apartment and put food on the table. The owner of the cantina was a human, and while there were some working women who frequent, frequented the establishment, he had made it very clear to his patrons on her first day that Ayla worked for him and wasn't to be touched. Ayla remembered him from a mission she was on back when she was just a Padawan and secretly believed that he remembered her. Can I get you anything else? Ayla asked as she set the drinks on the table. What do you recommend for an appetizer? One of the customers asked. Well, the Nubian crab cakes are very good and my personal favorite. We'll have an order for that. Okay, Ayla said, writing the order down on her data pad. I'll put that in. More beings were coming into the cantina. It was going to be another long day. Ayla mentally told herself that in just a few more hours she could go home and put her feet up, maybe even watch her favorite hollow show if she wasn't too tired. Several customers called her over wanting service. Ayla found herself counting her found herself counting her lucky stars that she had gotten a job at this cantina. There were several others in the area where service, particularly from a female tw female Twi'lek, wasn't just delivering food and drinks. So, said one of the patrons, when is your shift over? Ayla knew that look. She had seen it many times before, going back to when she was a Padawan. That's my business, she said as politely as she could. You're real pretty, the man said as if he hadn't heard her. 
I have a boyfriend, Ayla lied, knowing this often got people to leave her alone. And I have to get back to work. Several hours later, she left the cantina. All she wanted was to go home, put her feet up, and relax after a long day. Suddenly, she sensed something, and someone blocked her path. I've been waiting for you, said the man from earlier. Before Ayla could do anything, someone else came up behind her. There you are, sweetheart. Sorry I'm late. Ayla knew that voice, but it couldn't be. She thought he was dead. Can I help you? Kit asked as he put an arm around Ayla's shoulder and fixed his big black eyes on the man. Whether Kit had used the force or it was the sight of a Nautilin bigger than him, the man left. You're a lifesaver, Ayla said, when she was sure the man was out of healing range. I owe you one. You're my friend. You don't owe me anything, Kit said, but I won't say no to a place to stay. My apartment isn't far from here. It's small, but it's home. Remember how the rooms were at our old home? A small apartment won't bother me. Kit entered the lift to take him to the apartment he shared with Ayla. It was slightly bigger than her first one, a two-bedroom instead of a one-bedroom, and cost a bit more in rent. But considering Ayla had gotten him a job as a bartender at the cantina where she worked, they were able to afford it. Today was his day off, but Ayla had to work, so Kit was planning a surprise for her. He and Ayla had been friends since they were both younglings at the temple. He had vivid memories of training and studying with her. In fact, the only time they had been separated was when they were both selected to be Padawans. Entering the apartment, Kit got started on dinner, wanting it to be ready when Ayla got home. He was planning on making her favorite meal. The trick would be to get it all done before she got home. It had been a long day, and all Ayla wanted to do was to put her feet up. She took the lift up to the floor to the apartment she and Kit shared. When she opened the door, the most delectable smell hit her. Is that deep fried Nuna Lakes? She said. Your favorite, Kit said. I remember how, back at the temple, you always had them on your birthday. I'm surprised you remember that. I remember everything about you. How your lacou curl when you're ha excited. How your eyes sparkle when you're happy. How frustrated you would get during lightsaber training when we were younglings. Ayla felt her heart beat faster. I love you, Ayla. Ayla didn't know what to say. They had been raised to believe that love was an attachment that was forbidden. But here she was having Kit tell her that he loved her, and it felt right. Everything she believed and had been taught told her it was wrong, but her heart told her it was right. I love you too, she said. I think I always have. Okay, now, for if any of you out there have a fanfic that you want me to do a reading on, or a short story you want me to do a reading on for either Fanfic Corner or Story Corner, please feel free to send it to my Facebook page, Tumblr account, or my Facebook group. I will have the links for all three in the description section. A couple of things to keep in mind. First off, please be sure to include your name or the name of the author. Second, please try to keep them short. Third, tree Please try to keep them clean and appropriate.
Um, fourth, if it is a holiday fanfic or short story, please be sure to submit it two months before the holiday and to include the name and the date of the holiday. And finally, please be honest.